Hi, welcome to Dreamsicle Designs by Danielle. In this video, I show you how to design and sew your very own travel peplum top. It has a secret pocket for you to hold your passport, your driver's license, credit cards, debit cards, and other important cards, and a wad of cash. It also has detachable sleeves so that you can have short sleeves during the day when it's warmer and long sleeves in the evening when it's cooler. Let's get started. Start with your basic bodice block stretch edition. If you don't have one, watch my tutorial video linked in the description. I'm using a boat neckline which will allow the front and back bodice block stretch edition to be symmetrical. This will allow you the versatility of wearing the hidden pocket on your front or your back. To draw the boat neckline, mark two inches inwards from your shoulder point along the shoulder line. If you'd like a wider boat neckline, you can make the shoulder line even shorter. It's up to you as the designer. Next, connect the shoulder mark to your center front using a curved ruler. Make sure the line levels out at the center front so that it can smoothly connect to its other half. The top will end at the waistline, so draw a horizontal line through the waistline. Remember to redraw your seam allowances. I'll be using a facing to finish the neckline. The facing is a replica of the upper portion of your pattern block that is bounded at 1.5 inches away from the neckline on the shoulder line and 2.5 inches below the center front. These are the final upper top patterns. Cut two of the front top pattern on the fold from your knit fabric. Cut two of the facing on the fold from your knit fabric and cut two of the facing from your knit interfacing. The top peplum is a full circle skirt that attaches at the waistline. First, we need to draw the inner circle which sits at your waist. Take your waist circumference measurement from your top and divide that by 6.28, then subtract 0.5 inches. This is your circle radius. Mark the radius on your paper around a center point. You only need to draw a quarter of the circle as you will cut it on the fold. You can use a tape measure like I am or a compass. Second, we need to draw the outer circle which represents the peplum length. Draw a line that is 8 inches long plus a 1 inch hem around the circumference of the circle. Using a curved object like a flexible ruler, connect the ends of the lines. Draw the seam allowance on one end of the circle skirt. The other end is the fold line. This is your peplum skirt for your travel top. Repeat this process for the second and shorter peplum that will hide the zipper. It has a length of 1.5 inches plus a one inch hem. These are the final top peplum pieces. Cut two of each from your knit fabric on the fold. The hidden pocket is a rectangle that is 5 inches wide plus a 0.5 inch seam allowance on both sides by 7.5 inches tall on the fold plus a 0.5 inch seam allowance at the top. The pocket is big enough to fit a passport, cash, credit cards, and other important cards. If you'd like it to fit something larger, you can simply increase the dimensions. But make sure that the length doesn't extend below the length of your peplum so it remains hidden. This is the final pocket pattern. Cut one from your woven fabric on the fold. Start with your basic sleeve block stretch edition. If you don't have one, watch my tutorial video linked in the description. The sleeve consists of four pattern pieces. The upper sleeve, the bottom sleeve, the sleeve band that will join the upper sleeve with the bottom sleeve via buttons, and the peplum that will hide the buttons. For the upper sleeve, Determine the length that you would like the short sleeve to be. Then mark that distance measurement from the sleeve cap. Draw a horizontal line through that mark to indicate the bottom of the sleeve. Add the seam allowance to the bottom. This is the final sleeve pattern. Cut two of each from your knit fabric. For the bottom sleeve, this starts where the upper sleeve ends and stops at your wrist. Divide the top portion of the bottom sleeve into four. About 0.5 inch below the top portion of the bottom sleeve, mark the location of the three button holes. The fourth button hole will be located at the seam allowance. To hide the interfacing and provide additional structure for the button holes, 
Extend the top part of the sleeve by 1.5 inches. Then draw a mirrored line on both sides so that when the top part is folded down behind the buttonholes, it aligns with the rest of the sleeve. This is the final sleeve pattern. These are the buttonhole marks, and this is the fold. Cut two of each from your knit fabric. For the interfacing, cut two pieces of the top three inch of the sleeve. For the sleeve band that will join the upper sleeve with the bottom sleeve via buttons, this is a duplicate of the top 1 inch portion of the upper half of the bottom sleeve, plus a 0.5 inch seam allowance. Divide this into 4. About 0.5 inch below the top of the sleeve, mark the location of the 3 buttons. The 4th button will be located at the seam allowance. To hide the interfacing and provide additional structure for the buttons, Extend this portion of the sleeve by 1.5 inch, then draw a mirrored line on both sides so that when it is folded in half, it matches itself. This is the final sleeve pattern. This is what it looks like when it's folded. Cut two of each from your knit fabric and cut two from your knit interfacing. For the peplum that will hide the buttons, same as with the top peplum, it is a full circle skirt. First, we need to draw the inner circle. Take the measurement of the bottom circumference of your upper sleeve, add 1 inch, and divide that by 6.28, then subtract 0.5 inch. This is your circle radius. Mark the radius on your paper around a center point. You can use a tape measure like I am, or a compass. Since this is a small circle, you can draw the entirety of it and cut it in one whole piece. Second, we need to draw the outer circle, which represents the peplum length. Draw a line that is 1.5 inches plus a 1 inch hem around the circumference of the circle. Using a curved object, like a flexible ruler, connect the ends of the lines. This is the final sleeve peplum. Cut two of each from your knit fabric and make a cut down the length of the peplum. Here are all the final travel sleeve pieces. This is the upper sleeve. This is the bottom sleeve. This is the sleeve band. This is the peplum that will attach to the bottom of the upper sleeve, hiding the sleeve band that will join the upper sleeve to the bottom sleeve via buttons. And that's it! We're done our designing. I highly recommend making a prototype to confirm the fit of your design. This is my knit fabric that is a two-way stretch. It's important that your fabric is only two-way stretch along the cross grain. Four-way stretch won't work because we need stability along the grain to support the pocket. This is my woven fabric for the pocket. I'm using leftover cherry cotton fabric. You will need 8 small buttons. Mine are 3 eighths of an inch. You will need one invisible zipper that is 7 to 9 inches in length. This is my knit fusible interfacing that is made from tricot. It has two-way stretch along the cross grain. You're welcome to use sewing interfacing. Either will work as long as it matches the properties of your fabric. To cut your fabric, lay it on the wrong side facing up, use a rotary cutter or scissors, and remember to mark your notches. These are the cutout pattern pieces for the travel top. The main knit fabric, cotton woven pocket fabric, and the knit tricot interfacing. Note for the knit interfacing, it should be trimmed to remove seam allowances to prevent bulky seams. The first step is to attach the interfacing pieces to the top facing, sleeve band, and the upper portion of the bottom sleeve. If you're using fusible interfacing, use the heat from your iron on top of a damp pressing cloth to apply the interfacing. This is what the interfacing should look like after it's applied. We're ready to start sewing. Place the shoulders of the facing right sides together. Clip or pin the shoulder line in place. Repeat the same process for the top shoulders. I like using this bulky seam jumper tool to initiate the stitching as it helps prevent my feeder dogs from eating my fabric. You simply place the bulky seam jumper tool behind half of the sewing foot to raise it up a little. After you've sewn a few stitches, you can remove the jumper tool. Since we're using a stretchy fabric, you will need to use a ballpoint needle and a zigzag or stretch stitch. If you have a walking foot or knit foot, that can make it easier to sew stretchy fabrics. Sew along the shoulder line. Once you finish sewing the shoulder lines of the facing and top, 
Take a small strip of interfacing that is cut along the grain and apply that to the seam allowance of the top shoulder line to reinforce the shoulders to minimize stretching when it's worn. You can also use a thin and clear stretchy elastic instead. Trim the seam allowances down to 0.25 inches. Place the facing and top neckline right sides together, making sure to line up the shoulder seams. Clip or pin in place along the neckline. Sew along the entirety of the neckline, making sure that the shoulder seams of the facing and top line up. Trim the seam allowances. Turn the facing and top right side out. Prepare the neckline for top stitching by clipping or pinning the neckline seam folds in place. Normally, you would use an understitch on the facing, however, I find that for stretchy fabrics, a top stitch, at least for me, works better. Top stitch as close to the edge as you're comfortable with along the entire neckline. Press the neckline flat under a damp press cloth. Place the top right sides together. Clip or pin in place. Place the shorter peplum sides together. Clip or pin in place. Repeat the same process for the longer peplum sides. Sew the sides of the top and two peplum pieces together. Trim the seam allowances. Place the top waistline and shorter peplum waistline right sides together. Clip or pin in place. Sew the waistline circumference, making sure to line up the side seams. Prepare the hem of the shorter peplum by folding it in half by 0.5 inch and in half again by another 0.5 inch. Then clip or pin in place. Sew the hem of the shorter peplum. This is what the finished hem should look like. Press the hem flat. Place the longer peplum waistline and top waistline right sides together. Clip or pin in place. Take your measuring tape and mark the start and end point of your zipper. I chose to place my zipper at my front left. Sew a regular zigzag or stretch stitch outside the zipper location, remembering to backstitch on both sides of the zipper location. Once you get to the zipper location, sew with a straight basing stitch of length 5. Press the seam allowance open in the area that the zipper will go and press the zipper teeth flat. Place the zipper face down on the zipper side of the skirt, lining up the teeth with the center of the seam. Remember to place the zipper below the waist seam allowance. Clip or pin in place. I like to sew a hand basting stitch to hold the zipper in place before sewing it on the machine. You're welcome to skip this step and sew the zipper directly on the machine. Once you've finished hand basting the zipper in place, remove the basting stitches on the top using a seam ripper. You can see that the zipper is already starting to look nearly invisible. Unzip the zipper to prepare it for the sewing machine. Use an invisible zipper foot to sew the invisible zipper in place. If you don't have one, you can use a regular zipper foot, but you won't be able to get as close of a stitch to the teeth. When sewing an invisible zipper, press the zipper teeth flat so that you can get as close of a stitch as possible. Once you're finished using the invisible zipper foot, you will need to close the zipper, moving the slider body all the way to the top stop. Then use a regular zipper foot to stitch the bottom portion of the zipper. This is what your invisible zipper should look like. As you can see, it is completely hidden. To prevent the woven fabric from fraying, I'm using an overlock stitch with my overcast foot. You can also use a zigzag stitch or a serger if you have one. To finish the overlock stitch, manually tie the tail threads together a couple of times. Trim the invisible zipper down to the size of the pocket using pinking shears. Place the right side of one edge of the pocket against the inside of the zipper tape. Clip or pin in place. Repeat this process with the other edge of the pocket. Make sure that the zipper pull tab lies within the opening of the pocket. Sew the pocket to the zipper tape using a regular zipper foot. Sew as close as possible to the zipper teeth. This is what the pocket looks like after attaching it to the zipper tape. Next, attach the sides of the pocket, right sides together, clip or pin in place. Sew the sides of the pocket and sew as close as you can get to the zipper teeth without sewing over the zipper teeth. This is what your finished pocket looks like. Press the seams flat. Prepare the hem of the longer peplum by folding it in half by 0.5 inch 
and in half again by another 0.5 inch, then clip or pin in place. So the hem of the longer peplum. This is what the finished hem should look like. Press the hem flat. Fold the top portion of the bottom sleeve by 1.5 inch under per the pattern so that it's wrong sides together. Clip or pin in place. Top stitch the fold in place using a narrow zigzag or stretch stitch. To make it easier to do the top stitching, you can place tissue paper underneath so the fabric feeds more smoothly. This is what the top stitching looks like after it's complete. Press it flat. Mark the location of the three buttonholes with a fabric marker or chalk. Draw a straight line through the center of the buttonhole and a horizontal line at the bottom forming an upside down T. Using a buttonhole foot, place your button into the end of the foot and attach the foot to your sewing machine. Pull the top thread through the buttonhole foot opening. Remember to pull down the brown tab to indicate the starting location of the buttonhole foot. Select the buttonhole stitch in your machine. To prevent the fabric from being sucked down into the machine, use the tissue paper underneath the fabric. Line up the upside down T with the markings on the buttonhole foot. When you're ready to sew, lower the foot, press down on the sewing machine foot until the machine auto completes the buttonhole. Whip away the tissue paper from the fabric. This is what your completed buttonhole should look like. Take a seam ripper or a small pair of scissors to cut into the center of the hole. Be sure to cut away loose threads. Mark the location of the three buttons on the sleeve band. We're going to hand sew the buttons. Take your thread and fold it in half. Feed the two ends through the needle eye. Place the needle through the center of the button location from the right side, but stop before the end loop disappears. Poke the needle back through the center of the button location and place it through the loop to tie a knot. Fold the fabric horizontally along that buttonhole mark. Take your button and align the center line along that fold. Take your needle and feed it through a thread or two of the fabric before putting it through the buttonhole. Bring it back through the other buttonhole while piercing a thread or two of the fabric. Repeat this process three to five times until it feels sturdy. Flatten the fabric, then bring the needle to the front of the button through one of the holes that is not yet sewn. Loop it back through the other hole that is not yet sewn. Continue looping through those two holes three to five times until it feels sturdy. Wrap the thread below the button around a few times. On the last wrap around, pull the needle through the loop. Feed the needle to the other side of the fabric and tie a couple of knots. This is what your completed hand sew button should look like. Repeat this process for the other two buttons. Place the right sides of the sides of the bottom sleeve together. Clip or pin in place. Sew the sides of the bottom sleeve from top to end point. Prepare the hem of the sleeve by folding it in half by 0.5 inch and in half again by another 0.5 inch. Then clip or pin in place. Sew the hem of the sleeve. This is what the finished hem should look like. Press the hem flat. Place the sides of the sleeve band right sides together. Clip or pin in place. Place the sides of the upper sleeve right sides together. Clip or pin in place. Place the sides of the upper sleeve peplum right sides together. Clip or pin in place. Sew the clip sides together for the upper sleeve peplum, upper sleeve, and sleeve band. Trim the seam allowances. Place the peplum and upper sleeve right sides together, making sure to align the side seams. Clip or pin in place. Sew the peplum and upper sleeve together. Prepare the hem of the peplum by folding it in half by 0.5 inch and in half again by another 0.5 inch. Then clip or pin in place. Sew the hem of the peplum. 
This is what the finished hem should look like. Press the hem flat. Now that the sides of the sleeves have been sewn together, the final button hole and button can be sewn. The side seams of the bottom sleeve and sleeve band represent the center of the button hole and button, respectively. Follow the same steps as before to sew the button hole and button. Place the sleeve band and upper sleeve right sides together. Clip or pin in place. Sew the sleeve band and upper sleeve together, making sure to align the side seams. Press the band flat and try to press around the buttons. Trim the seams to reduce the bulk. Your upper sleeves are ready to be attached to the top, but first we need to prep the sleeve cap. Sew in two basting stitches of length 5 within the seam allowance and between your two notch points. The notch points are usually a few inches up from the end of the sleeve caps. The first basting stitch will be at a normal tension. Prior to the second basting stitch, increase the tension to a 6 or higher, which should auto-gather the fabric for you. Remember to leave long tail threads. Place the sleeve and top sleeve opening right sides together. Finesse the gather portion of the sleeve cap so that it matches with the sleeve opening, making sure that the center top of the sleeve cap aligns with the shoulder seam of the top that the sleeve side seam lines up with the top side seam, and that the other notches align. Clip or pin in place. I find it easier to sew a hand basting stitch to hold the sleeve in place before sewing it on the machine. You're welcome to skip this step and sew the sleeve directly on the machine. Sew the entire circumference of the sleeve. The next step is optional. You can remove all of the basting stitches with a seam ripper. Once removed, press the seams to one side. Also, trim the seams. The final step is to attach the facing to the top at the end of the shoulder via a hand stitch to hold the facing in place when it's warm. Hand sew a few stitches within the seams of the facing and top. And that's it. You're done sewing your travel top. Here are the detachable sleeves, and here is the top. The top is cute, practical, and versatile. You can style it however you like. Here's what it looks like with light blue jeans, gray jeans, jeggings, leggings, sweatpants, and even business pants with a blazer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you make your own travel peplum top yourself, please tag me. I'd love to see how it turned out. Happy sewing!